we started both at St. Martin School of Art in 1967 and 68. And then we had, we left St. Martin School of Art and we had this brilliant idea to make ourselves the living sculptor. And that moment we became different kind of art. We were able to project our feelings that are inside ourselves under walls forever. And it's more an emotional art, it's not an artistic art. Art is more being human is the most important part for us. Every single picture we create is made with our heads, our soul and our sex. Those are the three main driving life forces. So when a person views one of our pictures, they will view the picture through their heads, their souls and their sex. The head being their knowledge, the soul being their memory and thoughts and feelings, and the sex is, of course, a driving force that we all have. So every single picture we ever created, we see as a visual love letter from us to the viewer. We are inspired by the presence of the human life. We believe that the world is turning every day with enormous pain, and we like to be part of that. So we like to include in our pictures all of the universal issues that lie inside everyone, wherever they live on the planet, whatever their educational or religious background, they will always be concerned with death, hope, life, fear, sex, money, race, religion, shitty, naked, human world. And that's our world, which we like to think we are exploring together with the viewer. We are walking hand in hand with the viewer down life's road. We don't know anything better or more than the viewer. We are all conventionalized and we're all questioning our conventions to see which are fine and should be supported and which ones can be changed or thrown away. The world is an entirely different one from when we were baby artists in 67. Everything is different and we believe that that is a cultural change. It didn't change because of the policeman, it didn't change because of the vicar, it changed because of music and drama and theater and books and paintings and sculptures and song and dance. It is the cultural reality that built up this great triumph of the West. If you go to a country where there's no opera house or library or university, you will find it to be a very dangerous country. You almost certainly need a bodyguard culture makes us safe and free and we are very very fortunate being both country boys that we gravitated towards the city and ended up in the east end of london which encapsulates all of our thoughts and feelings and knowledge about the very important thing which is past present and future all of our pictures have to be involved with past present and future they cannot be just modern art and they ignore all of the history and they have to be able to speak now and they have to be created in such a way that they will survive and be speaking in the future i mean it would be what call for us is very simple we look at life and what these interests us, like sexuality or religion or what nationalism what is in front of us all these subjects are in front of now or we see loneliness or we see all the drunks or we see all the drugs in front of our door. And so this is a cosmological world that we are encountering. And Liverpool Street Station for us is the center of the world because everything that happens in the world happens there as well. So we are, we understand life in an extraordinary way, just standing still and opening our door in Fournier Street. Our neighborhood <coughs> tells the history of mankind and it also predicts events. It tells you of the future. The stickers on the lampposts of political or religious co content always tell you of what is to come. We believe it tells our fortune. We want to provoke thought with our artwork and we do that because a lot of they are able to, to be infuriated or be very very happy at the same time. But we are provoking thought. And I think that an artist should always do that. If not, it's a dead art.
and there are we don't want.